can you please explain the exact process of the natural conception? See, yeah, natural conception uh, is very important uh, for the couple to understand how it is because based on that, we actually plan the investigations to be done. Huh. So what happens is in the female partner, basically there are uh, reproductive organs in the form of one is a uterus. The uterus has two fallopian tubes both the sides and there are two ovaries. Okay. So what happens is in the ovaries, the girl is born with a group of immature eggs hmm. and uh, uterus is an organ which carries pregnancy. So when she gets with the onset of periods, what happens is one of the immature eggs gets selected and the maturation process starts. Basically, she's going towards ovulation. Okay. Now, this maturation of the egg is happened within a water-filled sac, like a balloon filled with water, no? something like that. And the egg is maturing within that. So as the egg is maturing, the follicle size goes on increasing. So it starts from the onset of periods, that is day one of her cycle. And this process continues to the mid-cycle. Okay. So a girl has a normal cycle is around 28 to 30 days. Okay. So mid-cycle around 14, 15 day, the egg reaches complete maturation where the follicle bursts and the egg is coming out. Mm. So when the egg comes out, now egg is like a ball-like structure that needs to be picked up by the fallopian tube. Okay. This tube has to go collect the egg and it keeps it within it. Mm. Now what happens after that is during the intercourse, the male partner's semen gets ejaculated in the vagina. Now the semen has basically, there is a liquid part of it and there are sperms which are the eggs of the male partner. Mm. These sperms have a head, a body and a tail. So because of the tail fraction of the sperm, they have motility. So once the ejaculation happens in the vagina, the active sperms, they swim within the uterine cavity, they reach the fallopian tubes to the other end of the tube where the egg is there. And this process of the egg and the sperm meeting is one is fertilization. Mm. So now what's the critical point over here is once the egg releases the, the egg, the ovum of the female partner, the life is just 24 hours. Mm. So what happens is if the sperm reaches earlier than that or later than that, the fertilization doesn't happen. Happens, yes. So the timing is very important when couples are planning natural conception. So once the egg and the sperm, they fuse together, they form an embryo. Now this embryo starts dividing from the single cell. It becomes two, four, eight. So during this progression of the embryo, that gets slowly the tube is going to push it back into the uterus. So once ovulation happens on 14th day, the fertilization happens within the next 24 hours and then the embryo gets transported back to the uterus in about 7 days. Hmm. So once it reaches the uterus, here the embryo has to stick to the uterine wall. That process where the, uh, the uterus and the embryo interact and then the embryo gets stuck to the uterine wall, that is known as implantation. That mm. is the formation of the placenta, which transfers the nutrition from the maternal side to the baby side. Baby Once this is getting established, the nutrition goes from the mother and the baby, baby starts growing. And at that time, she misses her periods. So this entire uh, thing is very necessary for the conception. Doctor? Can you please explain what is the exact process of natural conception? Regarding natural conception, basically the reproductive organs of the female we need to understand. There is the uterus, there are two fallopian tubes on both the sides and there are two ovaries. The ovaries basically have immature eggs where one egg gets selected every month. So with the onset of periods, that is day one, the egg starts maturing. Usually mid-cycle between 14th-15th day, this egg is going to burst and come out of its follicle. So when this egg comes out, that process is known as ovulation. So when this happens, the egg's life is around 24 hours. So once the ovulation happens and the egg comes out, the tube is going to go, collect that again, keep it inside. Now, during intercourse, the male semen gets ejaculated into the vagina. Over there, the active sperms are going to separate out and they will swim into the uterine cavity, reach the fallopian tubes and reach the egg. Mm -hmm. Once it reaches the egg, the million sperms are going to dissolve the egg shell and one of them is going to enter the egg. This process is known as fertilization and the embryo gets formed. Okay. Now once the embryo is formed, the embryo has to get pushed back into the uterus. This process takes about 5 to 7 days mm. and once the embryo reaches the uterine cavity, there is a process known as implantation. Implantation is a connection that happens between the embryo and the uterus. So there is a blood connection that happens where the maternal nutrition or the mother's uh, nutrition from her body gets transferred to the yeah. embryo and then the embryo starts growing and she skips her periods. The only critical point what we need to understand here is the lifespan of the egg. So once ovulation okay. happens, the life of the egg is around 24 hours, whereas the male sperm after ejaculation, the life is around 3 to 5 days. Okay. So the timing of the intercourse is very important when couples plan their natural conception. So ideally we tell them that once the ovulation happens, there is no point having intercourse. Mm. So if you are planning for pregnancy, the ideal time to have intercourse is about 3 days prior to ovulation and okay. up to the day of ovulation. So that's the most best part, that is between the 10th day probably to the 15th or 16th day of the month. Yeah. Yep.